Awesome. Welcome everyone to Getting Fiscally Fit. Just one quick reminder before we begin the presentation, please do keep your questions until the end of the webinar. You can type your questions into either the chat box or the Q&A box. I will be monitoring that during the program. And at the end of the program, I'll go ahead and ask those questions out loud to Mark. Um, after this webinar, all the participants are going to be sent an evaluation form via the email address that you registered with. Um, I ask that you please fill out this evaluation form and either email it back to me or return it physically to me at the library. Um, these evaluation forms are really important in helping us choose future financial webinar topics. So if you have an opinion as to what you want to see next, please do fill out that evaluation form and send it back to me. So tonight, our speaker is Mark Katona from the South New Jersey chapter of the Society of Financial Awareness. The mission of the Society of Financial Awareness is to end financial illiteracy across America, one community at a time. They strive to ensure that their workshop participants increase their financial knowledge while finding needed solutions to their own individual financial issues. So without further ado, I will turn things over to Mark. Well, you were, you were excellent, Chelsea, and I, I couldn't have said it any better. So I just want to say welcome, everybody who is on this evening. And we're excited because this is our, our first uh, SOFA webinar with your library. And uh, as she said, our, our mission is to, is to try to wipe out financial literacy across our, our nation, one community, one group at a time. So you guys are, are, and I am blessed to, to be the speaker for this event, but I just want to say thank you, Chelsea, for reaching out and, and finding us because we, we love doing these and we like educating America and anybody who is on, you know, feel free to take down my phone number there, uh, the email address, and uh, you know, if you want to contact me, it's always good to call, just say who you are and how you found out about me. And I would love to work with your, your group, your association, your organization, place of worship, whether it's a union, your employer. You know, we grow, as I say, one community at a time, but it's usually at groups at a time. And because people today are, they're so sick of being sold something, uh, which being a uh, 501c3 nonprofit that in our bylaws, we're we're here to educate only, okay? And that's really important. And you guys should know that. And that evaluation form is extremely important that you get it back to us because I have to show proof that I did my due diligence and job. And feel free to uh, take notes on the back of it. So when we have our one-on-ones that everybody will have an opportunity to do, they're all going to be virtual one-on-ones, but I'll be able to see you, you'll be able to see me, and I'll be able to answer all of your your personal questions and feel free at, at the end, we're gonna have uh, an opportunity for, for questions and answers, but we don't wanna be the general questions. We don't wanna go into complete detail for personal because guess what? Your answer might be a little bit different than somebody else's answer that is in the webinar. So for those real personal questions, hold off till you meet with me one-on-one -on -one and I'll be glad to answer every single one of those questions. So. We will get started. So obviously, you know my name. It's Mark Katona, and I'm the I'm the South Jersey chapter president. But I am all over the country speaking, you know, in different different venues. And the the goal and mission is, is to conquer and, and eliminate financial literacy. Um, I could skip these uh, as you want to. We've been founded though in 1993 as a, as a public benefit corporation to uh, end financial literacy across America. This is a sample of, of the evaluation form that you should have. And as I say, right on the back of it, um, there's parts of it there in the front that we need everything filled out. If you would like to have that one-on-one, -on -one, that's where you will be placing, yes, I would like to have a one-on-one -on -one, or no, I would not, then you don't have to fill out that form. But if you do, make sure you put your phone number clearly, best time to call and an email address. So um, at the end, um, I mean, there's also a Calendly calendar. For those who are familiar with Calendly, you just go to calendly.com uh, with a forward slash of Mark Katona to schedule a 15-minute a meeting for yourself. So you can feel free to do that and take down my Calendly calendar to do that. So whether you have a lot of money or just a little, a true measure of your financial success is the ability 
to meet your goals. Imagine your financial goal as a destination you could travel by car. To reach it, you'll need to make uh, efficient use of your money as you prepare for the journey. And you'll need to set up aside certain resources for your, your you know, just as you can use along the way. Uh, you'll get a tune-up, check the tires, pack some food, et cetera. And you'll also figure out how much money you'll need for gas and tolls during the trip, all before you leave the driveway. Achieving your financial goals uh, should work much the same way because attaining them depends on the thoughtful preparation. Properly developed goals can be incredibly motivating. And as you get into the habit of setting and achieving them, you'll probably find that your self-confidence has increased as well. By constructing a strong goal developed routine, you can measure and take pride in the achievement of the goals you've set, in turn by helping to ensure future financial successes. And I have to say this, you know, you also have um, being a role model, if you're a mom and dad and you have children at home, they're watching what you're doing. They're taking mental notes. And these guys are going to be mirror images of you down the road. So you just have to keep that in mind. You know, when you look at this, creating and building a security, I mean, number one, we look at uh, our foundation. We manage it or it manages us. And that's your that's your cash management. So your cash management is your foundation. And it's broken down into five different compartments. Number one is protection against possible loss of all areas of life. Okay. Two is your retirement, having enough money to preserve your lifestyle after employment. Okay. Reliability of income is the ROI knowing that you have attained enough income so it'll last as long as you do in retirement. And that's a big problem today because people are running out. They don't have their money in the right items, okay? They haven't saved enough. They didn't have anybody that really helped them along their journey. You know, they kind of winged it on their own. Maybe they fell into hard times or whatnot, but they really didn't save enough. Don't rely on Social Security as your only form of retirement income, because that's not what it was built for. It was built to be only about 40% of your income. And if you go to ssa.gov, which is a social security website, that will tell you this should only be used up to about 40% of your income. Get other investments out there that you can use to supplement the other 60%. And, and different investings, well, diversification, Asset allocation, mitigating potential losses. It really depends on the type of investments that you decide that you want to be invested in. And taxes. Taxes are so important today, okay? Especially, you know, look at our federal taxes. We have a, a problem in our country, and that is the government is just spending money like it's going out of style, you know. We, our inflation rate has jumped up to about five and a half percent, the most it's been in a long time. Okay, think about that. That's that's kind of crazy. If you look at what it costs for a, 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 a gallon of gas, you know, a gallon of milk, a loaf of bread, okay, a sheet of plywood, a sheet of plywood, which was $15 a year ago, is now $75. Okay, that's gigantic. For those out there wanting to build a home, I mean, it's crazy, but we're also looking at taxes in the future, where the sunset on federal taxes are going to go away in 2026. So we have to be prepared and we need to plan properly. So estate planning, leaving your assets and your directives to your loved ones, possible philanthropy. Okay. Do you have an estate plan? Do you have a will set up? Do you have a living will set up? Do you have your powers of attorney for healthcare and financial? Or do you have a revocable living trust? You need to have something in place, you know, because if you don't, you know, it's called intestate. And an intestate, you know, you're going to have a judge who you might not even know is going to dictate somebody to take your assets and to take those assets and distribute them after your death. Folks, we all should have at least a will set up for ourselves. 
It doesn't cost very much money, but it needs to get done because you're going to die one day, okay? Or you're going to become ill or you're going to become incapacitated. And if you can't make a health care or financial decision for yourself, you need to have your powers of attorney for financial and health care set up. Plus a living will. If you go on life support, somebody who's going to be pulling the plug or not pulling the plug, are you going to be hydrated? Are you going to be fed? All these things have to take place and should be in place before an incident like this happens. So don't procrastinate, get it done. Getting fiscally fit is a process, okay? As with any process, understanding its moving parts helps you develop a well-rounded approach to meeting your objective. When it comes to getting fiscally fit, you have to understand what you're up against. There are a lot of challenges we have to contend with, especially since the downturn in the economy. However, having an understanding of what stands in your way allows you to develop strategies to overcome those challenges. Once you have an idea of what you're up against, you can start and gain control of your financial situation. Now, it's really important that we're understanding this as I say this. As you can imagine, not having a command of your money uh, makes it difficult to plan for your future. Fueling your plans is revenue or cash. So one of the processes is increasing your cash flow. From there, it's important to build an emergency fund. Things happen, your car breaks down, your tax bill comes in higher than you thought. You may face a medical emergency. You'll need cash on hand to deal with the circumstances that like that. You also have to plan for tomorrow. What are your financial goals? What do you plan on doing? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to achieve? These are important questions that will drive you toward your financial success. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Getting control of your finances is hard work but it gets easier when you have the right mindset. Our best traits become habits. and we get in the habit of making good sound financial decisions, our financial future becomes stronger. It's up to you to make the determination. I'm going to get control of my money and use it in the best way to meet my goals. That should be your mantra. Once you adopt to this philosophy, you take an active role in building your financial future. Honestly, there's very little that can stand in your way. The important part to understand is that nothing will change until you do. Let's talk about change because people don't like change. The economic downturn created a new retirement reality. Many of us are going to have to work longer to meet our financial needs. For some people, that's fine. Many baby boomers don't see themselves retiring at all. Some prefer to transition to more of a work-life balance. However, there are still some of us that want to go fishing. During the recession, Americans experienced an unprecedented loss of wealth. It will take time to recover from those losses. This means that many of us will have to work into our 70s. The good news is that any generation can do it. Baby boomers can. Our average life expectancy is roughly 80 years of age, giving us the cushion to recuperate some of our losses. That being said, we have acquired new financial obligations, which will challenge our fiscal fitness. Our children are struggling and many of us are trying to support them as they face a difficult job market. Also, we have to contend with a volatile stock market and economic aspects such as inflation. And, and I said inflation because a little while ago, I mentioned to you that the inflation rate that was announced out there, it's five and a half percent, which is pretty strong. So one of the more important challenges to embrace is the role Social Security plays in our future. The program has always been intended to offer supplement income throughout retirement. This is meant to aid us, not support us. Therefore, we have to increase our personal and retirement savings. Now that's easier said than done. Personal savings rates are at 5%, well below the recommended 10% of your net income. This is attributed to wage depreciation, underemployment, and the overall stagnant economy. But things will get better. And when they do, we have to remain aware of just how bad things were. It's easy for us to get back into our spending habits, but this economy is a teachable moment. We've all had to tighten our belts and look at our finances differently. 
we have the opportunity as the economy recovers to place a serious focus on wealth creation, providing we make a informed financial decision or decisions. This means taking on less debt and putting more money into our savings. Debt is something far too many of us struggle with. Heck, even the government struggles with debt. For every dollar the government spends, 40 cents of that is borrowed. Now, just imagine that in your own house, what if you had to borrow 40 cents out of every dollar you spent? How could you survive? Arguably, we're having a tough time surviving right now. Credit card debt stands at a little over $750 billion. The housing market is still recovering and many of us are holding homes now worth less than we owe on our mortgages. And millions of Americans struggle with the student loan debt. It can feel like the world is crashing around us, but it doesn't have to be that way. There are a tremendous amount of support mechanisms in place to help you out. If you're dealing with high levels of stress because of credit cards, student loans or mortgages, you can contact nonprofit agencies that can give you advice on and, and connect you to the resources. You can also contact a housing counseling agency in your neighborhood that can help you determine your better ways to deal with your mortgage. And if you're struggling with student loan debt, contact your loan service and work with them to identify applicable repayment programs. Getting out of debt is a really important strategy. Uh, doing so allows you to explore a multitude of financial opportunities. It also helps you save money on future financing uh, that you may be required to be in. The less debt you carry, the less risk you represent in the lenders. Let's take a deeper look at how debt jeopardizes your finances. First, we have a credit card with a $2,000 balance. All the way to the left of the screen, we see an individual who represents a good lending risk. They have a 60% interest rate. Next, we see someone who is a high risk and thereby charged a 29% interest rate. That's a huge difference. It's 13% difference. Paying the minimum payment each month, the person with the 60% interest rate would repay a total of $4,994. $2,000 for the principal and $2,994 for interest. A person with a poorer credit could pay back $8,742. That's $6,742 in interest. That's a huge difference. And if you're that second person, that's a large amount of money that's been taken away from your financial plan. Now, if you think that's starting, uh, let's just take a look at the same two individuals' mortgages. The person with the good credit receives a 5% interest rate. The person, you know, that person receives the 5%. The person with the poor credit rate receives a 7% interest rate. On a $200,000 mortgage at 5%, a person with good, good credit would pay $412,940, excuse me, $931. The person with poor credit would repay $526,063. That's a difference of $113,132. Just think what that money could do to help build the second person's financial future. There's a couple of debt repayment strategies you can employ. On the more popular method is the debt snowball method, where you commit extra funds to pay off your accounts starting with the smallest balance first while paying minimum payments on the larger debts. When the smallest debt is paid, go after the next larger debt and repeat. You do this until all your debts are repaid. You can use a variation of the debt snowball approach where you commit the bulk of your funds to the accounts with the highest interest rate. When you paid off the account, move into the second highest interest rate and so on. If debt is causing you significant strain, you may want to talk to a credit counselor agency, which I already explained. So uh, to take care of your debt and build a foundation of wealth creation, you have to take control of your immediate financial situation. This starts with a budget. How many people on this call have a budget? I don't know. Looks like we have 12 participants. 
I'm wondering if everybody has a budget. Most of the people I talk with don't have budgets. And it's really simple, folks. All you need to do is just go to Google search. Just Google monthly budget. Some will come up. You can print them out. And if you meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, just mention, I need a monthly budget because it's very imperative that you have one. So, however, I want to dig a little deeper into some ideas for increasing your cash flow. One of the easiest ways to give yourself a raise is to take a look at your tax refund. If you're getting a few thousand dollars back every year, you're giving the government a zero interest loan. That money could be going to much better use in your financial plan. Talk to your human resources department, learn more about adjusting your deductions and your pay. Also, take a look at your current expenses. Are there ways you can cut back on what you're spending for your cell phone, cable television, even your utilities? Every dollar you are saved is a dollar earned towards building your financial future. Go through your expenses, call your utility providers, and work with them to identify ways that you can save on their services. You might be surprised at how much cash you'll be able to free up. I'm going to tell you a personal story. I have direct TV. I don't know if anybody has direct TV, so I'm just going to give you an example. I didn't want to pay the high bill in my office. So I called them up and I said, I want to cancel the service. They said, why? I said, I can't afford you. It's crazy what I'm spending. It was over a hundred dollars a month. They said, well, we can charge you like $32. Like for the same service and the same channels. They said, yes. I said, okay, charge me $32. You know, I saved about $70 a month, and I look at that as $840 a year. You think that would go into paying off some other debt? Of course it would. These are the kind of things you need to do. You need to go to each and every one of your utility bills and see if you could pay less on those bills. And I'm not going to say that's going to happen to everybody, but it's worth a try. Obviously, what I just explained is an overview. What do you do right now? Well, right now, you become the master of your own destiny. It's time to take a hard look at your income versus your expenses. In order to meet your goals, you're going to need as much money as you can raise. You may have to identify additional strategies to increase your income. How? Plenty of ways, but you have to determine which is the best one that's going to fit you. For instance, can you generate revenue from a hobby? Or how, or how can you, uh, are you an expert in, in starting a, a part-time uh, sales position job? Are, are you ex an exceptional educator? You might make a, a great tutor, or you just might uh, make an investment in yourself that will help you command more income in the future. The possibilities are endless. So think about what you're good at and research ways that you can turn that skill into revenue. You know, two hidden takeaways here, okay, that we need to talk about. You know, inflation, understanding inflation, and inflation is spending more dollars for the same items, okay? You know, I, I said a little while ago that the inflation rate that was put out, five and a half percent. That's... That's crazy. The, the average inflation rate in the last 10 years has been about one and a quarter percent. So it has been as high as 7%, uh, in the, I'll say, in the last 20 years. But we're looking at 5.5% right now. And, and taxes, you know, you only uh, do tax preparation after the fact. Try tax planning mid-year to, to know what's needed. Tax refunds are simply the return of your own money without earning any interest on it. So there's things that you can do that I explained already. Creating your spending plan, examining your income and expenses will go a long way in helping you establish uh, that emergency fund I mentioned earlier. I don't know about you, but I believe in Murphy's Law. Whatever you can go wrong will go wrong. Therefore, 
you have to prepare for the unexpected. I know, how do I plan for the unexpected? Well, the easiest thing is to have cash on hand. Your emergency fund should consist of savings equivalent to anywhere between three to six months of your expenses. Many of us live by the safety myth of, oh, that will never happen to me. Well, surprise. Emergencies could happen to anyone at any time. People get sick, deal with unexpected expenses, and face the very real reality of unemployment. To weather these storms, you'll need savings to go through. As these emergencies can happen to anybody at any time, you want to keep these funds in an account you can access quickly should the need arise. There are a number of savings accounts that offer you a higher interest rate than your local bank may offer. So conduct an internet search for the high yield savings accounts. And if that's of interest to anybody, just stick it on the back of your evaluation form. And I would be glad to go over that with you as well when we meet one-on-one. -on -one. Speaking of earning interest, Einstein once said that compound interest was the ninth wonder of the world. Compound interest happens when you earn interest on a principal investment. The interest earned is added to the principal and also earns interest, thereby compounding. So if you earn 10% on $10 compounding, so that in, in that investment, you would have earned a dollar. You now have $11 invested. The next time you earn 10%, you'll do that do you'll you'll do so off the eleven dollars you have invested thereby netting you one dollar and ten cents in interest you now have twelve dollars and ten cents invested now this process would continue on aiding you on your wealth building strategy the rule of 72 is a shortcut to estimate the impact of any growth rate especially telling you how long uh, it will take for your money to double in the investment. The formula is simple and it's really simple. You divide the interest rate you're receiving by 72 to learn how many years it will take you for your money to double in the investment. So for instance, if you're earning an interest rate of 8%, go to the formula and you'll read uh, eight divided into 72, yielding an answer of nine. Therefore, it would take you nine years to double your money if you're earning 8% in that interest for the rate of return. Understanding savings and compounding interest helps to put your future in context. Sometimes it's hard for us to look five, 10, even 15 years in the future. This is especially true when it comes to your financial matters. A study upon study has proven that people would rather have $5 in their pocket today rather than $10 next year. However, planning for your future is the most important thing you can do fiscally fit. It's important to look, look at your future earnings so you can understand you know, exactly uh, where you are and what they're gonna be at. There are a variety of financial products available to you. And I wanna spend a few moments explaining their differences. Before we continue, I just want to point out that many of these products present risks. The old saying goes, the higher the risk, the higher the return. This is especially true in the world of finance. A very risk strategy can, can, can yield tremendous results. It can also produce tremendous losses. So before we enter into investment strategies, please check with the financial professional. Okay. So with stocks, you become the shareholder in a corporation's assets and earnings. Your ownership is based upon the amount of stock you hold. Stocks are risky. If the company makes good decisions, your investment grows. If they make poor decisions, you could lose your investment. A bond is in essence is a loan. You as an investor loan money to a company for a defined period of time at a fixed interest rate. Interest on bonds are generally paid on a semi-annual basis. If you have a pension, you're among the lucky ones. Pensions were popular in the past, but have waned over the last few decades. A person is in retirement plan 
usually uh, a pension is actually um, exempt where an employer makes contributions towards a pool of funds set aside for an employee's future benefits. The pool of funds is then invested on the employee's behalf, allowing the employee to receive benefits upon retirement. A 401k plan is another type of plan offered by employers today. Um, and they're usually the ones who are not offering a pension plan. But some employers have pensions and 401ks. In a 401k plan, you make pre-tax contributions towards your fund. Many employers match your contribution up to a certain dollar amount or percentage. This is free money. So I urge you to re-examine your 401k contributions to take advantage of this great opportunity. Mutual funds are a pool of funds operated by managers who invest in the stocks, bonds, and other investment vehicles. The managed funds are invested according to the objectives stated in their prospectus. For instance, some growth funds invest in volatile markets. If they invest correctly, you win big. If not, you could lose your entire investment. With a traditional IRA, you contribute uh, pre-tax dollars to an account, which can be used to invest in a variety of vehicles, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, et cetera. While you don't pay tax on the money you contribute, you do pay tax when you retire and begin taking the money out of your IRA. The alternative to this, which is a great choice for most people, is a Roth IRA. The difference between a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA is when you pay the taxes, the main benefit is that the Roth IRA is that you use after tax money to fund it. So when you reach retirement, you will not pay any taxes on their withdrawals. And I work with plenty of people who come to me who have individual retirement accounts and they didn't set up Roths, they set up these IRAs. They really no one ever really talked to them much about what a Roth IRA is. So what I do is I set them up on a scale. So really depending upon how much extra money that they have, because when you could take a Roth IRA and you can take a portion of it or all of it and convert it to Roth IRA. So IRA can be converted to Roth IRA, but you just have to remember the year you do the conversion is the year you're gonna owe tax on that money. So when I'm working with people, I usually set them up because the sunset provision is gonna go away in 2026. Tax rates are gonna rise to what they were at least in 2017, if not higher. So the best time to prepare is in the next five years and do the Roth conversion with the IRAs. If that's of interest, if you wanna talk about it more, if you wanna get educated more, just write down, IRA to Roth IRA conversion. A lot of people ask, when is the best time to start investing? The best answer is when you get your first paycheck. As you notice, uh, starting to save in your 20s versus your 40s has a tremendous impact on generating wealth. We can see here, as an example, someone investing at age 20 versus age 21. Notice how much more short year makes a difference. I mean, just one short year can make a huge difference. In this example, we see that if someone started investing when they were 20, they would have over $2 million saved up by the time they retire. If they start at 21, they would have about 1.85 million by the time they retire. One year's costing them well over $100,000. As you get later in life, we notice those numbers drop exponentially. If you start saving 30 versus 20, you'll generate about half the wealth that you would if you started a decade earlier. And if you start in your 40s, you generate about a third of the wealth you would have started in your 30s. That's not to say if you're older that you shouldn't start saving now. There are ways to make up for the lost time, and it's important to talk to you know, the person who um, you're comfortable speaking with could be me. It could be another financial professional, whoever you choose. 
But all we're saying is, you know, what needs to be done, it has to always be in your best interest. So we discussed a lot of information tonight and some of which may seem intimidating. The good news is that there are people out there who can help you get to the next level, uh, but it starts with you. It's time to take stock in your own financial life. For instance, ask yourself these simple questions. When was the last time you made a budget? Do you have a debt repayment strategy? How much of your income are you saving? Do you have an emergency fund? Have you talked to a financial planner yet? These are only some of the questions you need asked when determining your financial course. At the end, it's up to you. As, as you've learned, becoming fiscally fit requires a plan of action, choices, and guidance. We know that things like Social Security are the only meant to supplement your income, not be your outright retirement plan. We also know that it's important for us to gain control through budgeting, increasing cash flow, and building that all important emergency fund. Lastly, know that we have a, to plan for tomorrow and that planning cannot be achieved without, unless you are a, in a financial house in order. You need to make sure that financial house is in really good order. Becoming uh, financially fit, and it doesn't happen overnight. And, and it sure doesn't happen on autopilot. It happens when you become an engaged in your finances. So it's going to be up to you guys that are on this uh, webinar to determine what your destiny is going to be at. You know, and even if you just want to have a, a talk for yourself and say, hey, listen, uh, look at what I have. Or, am I in the right path? Because, folks, I have to say this to you. If you thought something was true and it turned out not to be true, what do you want to know? You want to know 10, 15, 20 years from now? You want to know now. You know, if you're only off a couple of degrees when you're on a boat, you can wind up over on the other side of the world rather than get to your destination. And that holds true with your finances. You want to make sure, you know, what I do with, with people is I do audits, okay? I look at beneficiaries. You'd be surprised. I got people who passed away 30 years ago. They still have their father as the beneficiary and they're, they're married. Just think if, you know, if you passed away and your dad is still your beneficiary and he passed away, but you're, you're married with children that your family, immediate family members would be hoping that they have to have those assets. But if you never really thought about it or you forgot about it, it's always good to just audit your current policies, whether it's your car insurance, your homeowners, your life insurance, your retirement investments. So once again, I'm going to put up that calendar for you guys at Calendly.com forward slash Mark Katona. And I see some questions or I got a question that came in. So let's me open that up and let's see what that question is. What are some examples of conservative savings vehicles? Well, well, I don't know who's asking that question. Uh, however, well, very conservative. Really, it really depends on the, on the litmus test that I do with you. Okay, there's plenty of accounts that I work with that are are fixed rates. Really depends on your age. Okay, um, how long you want to keep that account um, in that in that conservative savings vehicle? You know, depending on, on your age, you know, there might not be an account that you could put it in. So I don't. To, to answer that question, I would have to ask you a few more questions like um, your age and then also how much money you're talking about because there's a plethora of product but really depends on the individual, what their, what their wants and their needs are. So if you wanna just maybe, uh, as I say, schedule, schedule a meeting and I can be more definitive in my answer for you, whoever that may be. I'm gonna go over here in the chat. Will this presentation be emailed out? I don't think so. No, um, these are for people who are who are uh, on the webinar uh, present. So, uh, if you want to have your own one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to schedule your your meeting with me, and I'd be glad to go over 
every question that you have. Okay? Let's see. This was a good presentation. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad you feel that way. I hope I'm gonna pronounce your name right. Is that Erini? Okay. And then we have Julia. Well, thank you very much. We love, we love compliments. And, and we work hard to make sure that, you know, we're, we're getting the right and good information out there. And I'll say this again, feel free to, you know, if you're looking for a specific topic, go to the choices that are in there. We have actually 34 different webinars. Uh, but the ones that are on your evaluation form, you know, there's, there's a couple deeper ones that have to do with those topics that are there. So feel free, as I say, to fill that out. Get that, get that back to Chelsea. Um, Chelsea, I imagine they have your email as well. Yes. So what's going to happen is after the webinar, um, sometime tonight, I'm going to go ahead and get the email addresses of those who attended the presentation, and I'll email them out the evaluation form. So they'll um, have my email address in their email once I send that out to them. Excellent. Okay. Well, I just want to say thank you, everybody. Uh, keep in mind that our next webinar uh, for the library, it's gonna be a webinar once again, is gonna be on December 8th at 6.30. And this topic is social security, how to maximize your social security. So it's a wonderful topic. And for those who have at least worked 40 quarters in their lifetime, you wanna attend. You wanna see when what's gonna be your maximum, when to, you know, there's a, I'm, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag. I could do that, but I don't want to do that. It's very tempting. I just want you to show up on December 8th, sign up. So Chelsea knows that you're going to be pertaining and you're going to be part of it. And I'm looking forward to giving that webinar to each and every one of you and tell your friends, get, let this, you know, I don't know how many people, how many people can uh, we hold on the zoom meetings, Chelsea? I don't think that we've ever found the limit. <laughs> we have a paid account. So. I, oh, wonderful. So tell all your friends and family and co-workers, bring them on. Let them know what uh, the North Bergen Free Public Library has to offer. OK, and thank you again, Chelsea. Looks like uh, I, thank think you. I, might, I might have another chat. Let's look and see. Oh, please sign me up. That's Tatiana. OK, it's Tatiana, so, we don't have the signups on the website just yet, but we will have them very soon up. So please keep an eye on our website. We'll have that up very soon for you. Perfect. All right, folks. Well, you know what? Um, we, we're about we're about almost fifty minutes in, and if there aren't any other questions, uh, like I said, write down your questions. Feel free, sign up for a one-on-one, -on -one and I'll answer all your personal questions with you. Thank you, Chelsea, for allowing me to help you guys, and uh, I'm looking forward for our December eighth Social Security workshop. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Mark. We really appreciate you volunteering your time with us tonight. And that was a very, it. very good it. webinar. So thank Spread you so much. The word. For being tonight. All right. Thank you again. You have a great day, everybody. You as well. Good night, everyone. See ya. Bye-bye.